If you're an American, like me, first of all, fuck. Second of all, we live in a country that for half a century has been defined by something called neoliberalism. I don't love using that word because it sounds boring, and talking about neoliberalism is like basically asking to get, well, actually, by the worst people on the internet. Okay, that hurts, but it's important, so here we go. Neoliberalism is the idea that society works best when it's run by the free market and not the government. It's the belief that the most efficient way to distribute goods and services is by handing them over to the private sector. I know that sounds abstract, but you've definitely heard neoliberal thinking a lot in your life. Do you really want the government in charge of your healthcare? They're so slow and wasteful. Why not private insurance? Neoliberalism. If you keep giving people government handouts, they'll never learn to fend for themselves. You're creating a country of dependence. Neoliberalism. If you really want to help people, you should cut taxes and regulations. Let the private sector flourish. It's like they always say, rising tide lifts all boats. Neoliberals oppose government control of the economy, which is why, unlike a lot of developed countries, the US does not offer things like universal healthcare, free college, paid sick leave, or a bunch of other basic shit. If you want something in this country, you need to buy it on the free market. And that means you need to work. You want medicine and a place to live? Get a job. You want time off so you can be with your family? Get a better job. This is America, baby. If you don't have enough, you're not working hard enough. Hashtag no days off. Hashtag sleep when you're dead. Hell yeah. We don't really have a government safety net here. So if you don't have a job, you are shit out of luck. America has one of the worst unemployment benefits programs in the industrialized world. Giving people less money and covering them for less time after they lose their job. Even basic government aid programs like food stamps and Medicaid often have work requirements. Which means if you don't work a certain number of hours per week, you don't even qualify for help. Now, you may be watching this and thinking, yeah, that's the way it should be. If you don't work, you don't eat. And I have to admit, there is something primally seductive about the brutality of the free market. It's almost Darwinian. We're not a country of takers like those lazy Europeans. Work will set you free. We're not welfare queens looking for government handouts. Work will set you free. We're Americans. We pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. Work will set you free. And then, work will set you free. <coughs> something happens and suddenly millions of Americans are out of a job. The coronavirus has left millions of Americans out of work. 6.6 .6 million Americans filed for unemployment benefits last week. Countless more are sick or tending to the sick or trying desperately not to become sick. The entire US economy is essentially at a standstill. Entire sectors of the economy evaporate and won't be back for months. For example, in the restaurant industry, one in four of those jobs is never coming back. The thing about neoliberalism is if you can't work, if you don't have labor to sell at the free market, you are essentially worthless. So now we have millions of Americans with nothing to trade for basic shit like rent and food and medicine and a government that believes it's not its job to interfere with the free market. So what happens now? You selling those bootstraps? A neoliberal would say, this is what savings are for. It's not neoliberalism's fault these people didn't prepare for a rainy day, or weeks, or months, but actually, it kind of is. And I should say, before I show you this next sketch, that I haven't really had human contact for like three weeks, so if this is dark and disturbed, that's why. Wait, what? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Neoliberalism. What is it? Who owns it? And can I make it work for you? Let's say you're a boss trying to win big on the free market. And trust me, in this economy, you want to be a boss. Your job is to maximize profits. So what salary should you pay the employees who work for you? What? Ew. No. Don't pay them what their labor is worth. What are you, a communist? You pay them the lowest possible amount they'll work for. And when people don't have a government safety net to fall back on, they'll work for just about anything. Exactly. See, we're already winning. Look at those profits. I knew I liked something about you. You and me make a great team, but let's take it a step further. Say you're a businessman and you've come to the free market to sell things like healthcare and housing. 
pretty valuable goods you got there. So, what price should you sell them for? What? No! God damn it! What did I just tell you? What is this, a non-profit? Jesus! You don't price your goods at their actual value. You sell them at the highest possible price people will pay for them. And here's the gag. When it comes to stuff like housing and healthcare, people will pay just about anything not to die on the street. I know. Suckers, right? This is neoliberalism's ideal economy. Without Big Brother getting in the way, big businesses are making big profits, and everyone else is working harder than ever to stay alive. The free market, baby. Maximum efficiency. All hail the invisible hand. 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 All hail the This is how we got an economy where the stock market and pharmaceutical companies are thriving while millions of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. Most Americans can't afford a thousand dollars of unexpected expenses. Tens of millions are living without health insurance. And one in five aren't saving any money for the future. Neoliberalism has turned us into a country of people perpetually running on empty. And the thing is, a country can actually survive like that for a while. As long as most people keep making it to their next paycheck, they'll be too busy working to pick up their hammers and riot. Hell, with the right propaganda, you could even convince them that they like living like this. Last year, a guest on Fox said that Americans should be celebrating the fact that many of them will never get to retire. This is a great blessing. You should embrace it. What a great country where we have the opportunity to keep working. Why do I want to stop it? It's not like it hurts. It is part of your destiny to be productive and to work. Find the blessing in it. But when there's a crisis like the coronavirus and a ton of struggling people suddenly can't reach that next paycheck, the price of neoliberalism becomes obvious. While those lazy Europeans get to fall back on months of paid sick leave and generous social programs, most Americans have no plan B. Neoliberalism has taken the money that could have been used to build a social safety net and turned it into private profit. As one economist told the New York Times, it's the underlying structure. Americans are more vulnerable from the get-go, even in normal times. You throw a shock like this at the system, it's about as bad as it could get. So, what is the plan, Brenda? If work sets you free, what happens to those who can't work? I know. Why don't you beg for your life on GoFundMe? Like, like a real me. American. In countries that aren't sick with neoliberalism, the answer to a crisis like the coronavirus is obvious. In Denmark, the government is offering to pay up to 90% of salaries of workers who can't work, essentially paying them to stay home. In France, workers have a right of withdrawal, meaning they can refuse to work in unsafe or dangerous conditions without sacrificing pay. And in Germany, the government is making it easier to get unemployment benefits and setting aside extra money for parents who have to stay home and take care of their kids. This is kind of the whole fucking point of having a government. It's why we pull our resources together and pay taxes. And no homo, but it's actually kind of beautiful to be reminded why humans form communities so that we can care for those who can't care for themselves. But to a neoliberal, this is a goddamn nightmare. People being paid not to work? Big brother interfering with the wisdom of the free market? Don't you all want freedom? Uh, are you editing him like that? Editing him like what, Carl? Yeah, Carl, editing me like what? In America, we've taken the opposite approach. We've been on lockdown for less than a month. The pandemic is still in full swing and will likely get worse before it gets better. But already, the message is, get back to work. Trump is considering reopening the economy in the next few weeks. We have to get our country back to work. Our country wants to be back at work. In the New York Times, a plan to get America back to work, arguing that fears of the coronavirus are a form of groupthink and 
that not letting people work might be worse than spreading the virus. And then of course, there's Fox News, which spent weeks downplaying the severity of the crisis. I feel like the more I learn about this, the less there is to worry about. I was about to say the same thing. And is now arguing that actually, it's immoral to not make people work during a pandemic. After all, if they don't work, how will they eat? Can't shut in the economy. The economic cost to individuals is just too great. We're gonna have to make some difficult trade-offs. The cure can't be worse than the disease. All of these ghouls recognize that forcing Americans to go back to work right now will get countless people sick. Their argument is that it's worth it to preserve the integrity of the free market. We're gonna have to make some difficult trade-offs. In the most disturbing clip I have seen in a long time, the Lieutenant Governor of Texas went on live TV and said that the elderly should be willing to die if it means their families can get back to work. This disease could take your life, but that's not the scariest thing to you. There's something that would be worse than dying. Yeah, we got a choice here. Are you willing to take a chance on your survival in exchange for keeping the American that all America loves for your children and grandchildren. And if that's the exchange, I'm all in. Believe it or not, he's not alone. On his show, Glenn Beck said that he too would be willing to die if it kept the market moving. I would rather all of us who are over 50 go in and keep this economy going. Even if we all get sick, I'd rather die than kill the country because it's not the economy that's dying, it's the country. This is neoliberalism in its purest form a death cult that is willing to sacrifice a huge amount of human life if it's what the market wants. Don't you remember? You can sleep when you're dead. Dude, can we please stop with the creepy shit? Oh my God, you're such a wuss. I'm sorry, but the world is scary enough as it is right now. Fine, okay. Thank you. To be fair, not everyone on the right thinks like this. If you ignore Trump, and Fox News, and a whole bunch of conservative activists and politicians, there does seem to be a growing consensus that the government needs to intervene here. Congress has even agreed to give people a one-time $1,200 direct payment, which, you know, is great. Yeah, welcome to the resistance, you dick tits. But it shouldn't take a global pandemic to admit that worshiping at the altar of the free market is a shitty way to run a country. The problem with neoliberalism is not that it can't handle a big crisis like the coronavirus. The problem is that it keeps people constantly one crisis away from disaster, forcing them to always choose between work or ruin. Neoliberalism treats people like machines who will never break down so long as their survival depends on that next paycheck. But the brutal reminder of the coronavirus is that we are not machines. And as much as it breaks my Marxist heart to say this, we're not even workers. He doesn't mean that. We are soft, incredibly vulnerable to the world around us. Not just to the coronavirus, but to all types of disease and injury, violence, market changes, family breakdown, poverty, abuse, addiction, grief, burnout, and a whole bunch of other shit that we have very little control over. Part of the human condition is that sometimes we can't work. And we can do one of two things with that kind of grim reality. We can ignore it, keep going with this bootstrap bullshit, bouncing from crisis to crisis, praying to God that we and our families are never the ones who miss a paycheck. Or we can demand a country where getting our basic needs met is not contingent on our ability to work. Where instead of a government that says, no days off, never get sick, we have a government that says, we will care for you when you do. 